Hi, I'm happy to be here today to talk about our work on a mechanics-informed graph neural network to unfold the cortex. So in my research group, we're very interested in cortical thickness, which is the thickness of the outer cortical gray matter layer of the brain. This is an important biomarker of neurological health, and abnormalities in cortical thickness are associated with a number of different mental and neurological disorders, including autism spectrum disorder, epilepsy, and schizophrenia. Cortical thickness has a characteristic pattern in folded brains where it tends to be thicker in the outer gyral mountain peaks of the brain um, and thinner in the inner sulcal valleys. Um, and this is a characteristic pattern that's been known for a long time that's seen um, across uh, both between individuals and within individuals. There are a number of different factors that contribute to the thickness of the cortex, and we can group them uh, sort of generally into two different buckets, like biology representing gene expression, cell behavior, tissue properties, and mechanics, which represents you know, the forces applied to these things. Um, and both of these uh, contribute to cortical thickness. So in graduate school, I published a paper showing um, that the mechanics of folding itself actually leads to these uh, thick gyri and thin sulci. So even in simulations that we did and experiments that we did um, with no source of biological heterogeneity, we naturally saw this emergence of thick gyri and thin sulci. More recently, <clears throat> in a paper published in my lab by, um, with Shuolun Wang, who's actually one of the authors of this presentation, um, we showed that heterogeneous growth in the cortex actually also contributes to this pattern of thick gyri and thin sulci. So in this um, paper, we explored the effect of heterogeneous growth throughout the cortex. Um, well, actually with the special case of homogeneous growth, or um, we had the ability to make sulci, the, again, those valleys grow faster, or gyri, those mountain peaks grow faster. And what we found was that the preferential gyral growth simulations best matched the data that we see in um, human brains. So we analyzed um, over 500 human brains and saw that the patterns in those brains best match this case of preferential gyral growth. Um, so just a note here in the simulations, the color is indicating the amount of growth that's happening with the darker colors representing more growth. So the motivation of this project using the graph convolutional network to unfold the cortex comes from the difficulty of comparing differently folded brains. So because mechanics is also contributing to the thickness of the cortex, um, it becomes really difficult to compare cortical thickness between either different brains or different regions of the same brain that are folded differently. And so this comes up in a couple of different scenarios. So first of all, during development, our brains mostly fold during the third trimester of gestation. So if you're trying to compare cortical thickness, say in one region or between individuals, between a, let's say 30 week old um, fetus or a, and a three year old human, or even more so a 30 year old human, you're gonna run into challenges because the cortical thickness is going to vary between those two, but is it varying just because the folding has changed or because there's something in the underlying biology, the underlying development of the tissue that's causing the, the thickness to change. Um, another case where this can come up is if you're studying sort of uh, comparative neuroanatomy or trying to understand the evolution of our folded brains. So these are images of um, a human brain at the far right and then uh, a handful of different non-human primates. And you can see that they, these brains vary in size and shape and foldedness. And so again, if you're trying to understand how one region of our brain got to be the way it is, or the whole, re the whole brain um, came to be as it is, and you want to do that by comparing our brains with some non-human uh, primate relatives, then you're gonna again run into this problem of you're comparing apples and oranges. You're comparing cortical thickness into regions that are folded differently, and so, even if the sort of biological underpinnings of cortical thickness were the same, the actual cortical thickness that you would see would be different simply because of the folding. So this gave us the idea, if we have these two factors, biology and mechanics that are contributing to cortical thickness, and presumably we're assuming here that the biology reflects more of the actual function of the cortex, um, then if we could remove the effect, account for and remove the effect of mechanics, we could come up with some modified cortical thickness that would better reflect the actual sort of cell and tissue behavior um, that's, that's contributing to cortical thickness and presumably to the functioning of the cortex. So using our um, approach here, uh, 
uh, this other author of this presentation, Francisco Salicotaval, developed a graph convolutional network approach that will use our simulations shown here, where we already know the geometry and the final thickness. And we use that to train this convolutional network to predict the modified cortical thickness. And so again, in these simulations, modified thickness is actually something we can calculate because we know how much the tissue has grown in a, in a given area and what the initial thickness was. Um, and so we can use this where, where both the input and output are known to train our, our, our network. After we have our trained network, then we can use this, apply it to MRI data or histology data, such as what's shown here, where we know the geometry and the final thickness, but we don't know the modified cortical thickness. And in this case, our convolutional network could be used to predict that quantity. So um, in the work that we're showing here today, uh, I can talk about our training data. Um, we use the, uh, to, to give sort of a robust training data set, um, we used uh, we included a lot of variety in our training data. And so, as I mentioned earlier, we have the ability to vary cortical growth throughout the domain. And so we used um, a variety of different parameters there. So we can have, again, homogeneous growth, preferential gyral growth, or preferential sulcal growth. And we can also vary the extent to which the growth differs in those regions. Um, we also included a varying initial thickness, which would, again, reflect sort of um, uh, biological heterogeneity that might exist in the system. So we can vary the, the initial thickness by plus or minus 20%. And we also vary the stiffness ratio, which is the tissue properties um, uh, of the, the cortex and the subcortex. And as you vary that, you see this um, gradual transition in the shape of the folds it's produced. Um, and using this uh, robust training data set that includes uh, some combinations of the, this variation and the parameters, um, we trained our graph neural network and we found that it is actually able to accurately predict the modified cortical thickness in our testing data. So we reserved a few of the cases of, of our simulations for testing and then used the rest for training. So here I'm showing one of the test cases, both the ground truth and our um, GCN's predictions. And then if we look across the testing data sets, um, we see that the, the error that the, this is the mean squared error here is really acceptable. So in conclusion, what I wanted to show you today is that cortical thickness results from a combination of biological and mechanical influences. And um, this makes comparisons of cortical thickness across regions that are folded differently really challenging. Um, but this graph convolutional network that we developed in sort of response to this challenge is able so far to accurately predict the modified cortical thickness in, in our testing data. So in the future, what we'd like to do is experiment with changes in curvature. So this sort of gross curvature of the domain, the simulation domain. Um, in the brain, you see regions of different curvature, including even local regions of concavity. And so that would be really interesting to explore. We have evidence we've actually published um, showing that CSF pressure changes the instability behavior of the brain. Um, and so presumably that might also affect cortical thickness differences. And we'd also like to include subcortical growth, which plays a really important role in cortical folding as well. And of course, the ultimate goal of this work is to predict the modified cortical thickness in real brains and to see if we can come to some new sort of biological understanding of what cortical thickness is and what it does. Um, in, again, real human brains. So just to wrap up, I'd like to acknowledge the other authors of this presentation and the other people who are working on this work, um, which includes my postdoc, Shulun Wang, and our collaborators at uh, Católica in Chile, Francisco Salicotaval and Vicente uh, Castro. Um, so we've had some seed funding from both of our institutions, Notre Dame and uh, Católica as well as uh, it's partially supported by my grant from the National Science Foundation. So I'd like to thank them as well. If you're interested for more information, these are the two papers on the sort of mechanics and biology co contributors to cortical thickness. I'm happy to talk in the question and answer session, or you can reach out by email or Twitter and I'd be happy to discuss further. So thank you very much.